What's up guys, Coyote Works here. Well, I'm heading out on another adventure today. I don't exactly have a specific plan. I'm just heading up into an area. I have about six different historic sites kind of mapped out that are, oh, within about a 50 mile radius of each other. So I'm just gonna head out into the upper country or this is what we call the upper country, the higher elevation part of the county that I live in and do some exploring around. And when it gets close to dark, I'll find a place to camp and hopefully I'll find something interesting. It's getting a little sloppy in here, so I don't know how much farther up this direction I'm going to be able to go, but I'm just going to keep pushing, and uh, maybe once I get over this ridge onto the south side, where the sun's hitting things more, I'll, uh, it'll be a little drier and I'll be able to get further. Alright, let me show you guys what I'm dealing with here. I'm, it's really soft up here, so there's the track I just came through and I'm just in the shady area and it's getting really soft and then right up here in front of me I got a little slope to the road and I'm a little worried about being in this soft stuff on the road and if I slide off into this ditch on the side I'm never coming out of here till spring so I've scouted out a little bypass that I think I can take around there and the only thing I have to do is get past this tree right here. So I'm going to trim up some limbs on that tree. I'm going to grab my silky saw. And do some All right, let's see how we do here. I'm ease up along the side. Try to stay as tight to that tree as possible. Get up a little speed. This is going to be soft. Oh yeah, nice. Ooh, I should have trimmed that. Ooh, that's gonna hit the rooftop tent. And I got that. I'll try to take that with a tire. Oh, sorry about the camera work. Yes, we made it. Back on solid rocky ground. Well, this day didn't go as planned like many of them do. And it's getting close to dark. It's 441 right now, which means I have about a half hour or so of light. So I just picked a random spot. I'm in terrible country to camp in. This is the kind of country that the wind just blows across. So I picked this spot because it was just the best thing I've seen for a long time. For a lot of miles, crawling along in low range across these rocky, muddy jeep trails up here but this site had a few trees here and <clears throat> there's a little bit of wood around here so i think it's just gonna have to do for the night all right my bed set up now i'm just gonna grab a couple of things out of the back so i can make a little dinner and make a little fire right here right after i got my rooftop tent set up i was looking out to a ridge line off in the distance and i happened to catch a little movement and then I saw the coolest thing. Look guys, right there's a wild horse standing there. Do you see it? Let me see if I can get the camera focused on it. He's just above those two trees, right there. He's only about 200 yards out from my camp. sun's in their eyes and the wind's in my face.
So guys, they're just up on that hill behind me and they can't see me because the sun is shining directly into their eyes. They also can't smell me because the wind is on my back. They know I'm here. I think they hear me talking every once in a while. There's just enough breeze that they're probably having a hard time pinpointing the sound. But it's pretty cool. I'm able to get really close to them. They say these wild horses out here are descendants of the herds that originally came north with the Spaniards when they were exploring up through California and arguably maybe even into the southern part of Oregon. They really want to come down here. I think they hang out in these trees and they browse down in this flat where I'm camping at night. See right in here where I'm camped, all this horse dung. There's my Jeep right there. And those horses are right up on the crest of the ridge back up there. So this is a spot that they come down to. They probably come down and hang out in these trees. There's piles of horse dung all over here. To make a bunch of noise setting up my camp because it'd be interesting to see how close in they come tonight but I don't have much daylight left I'm just probably in my last 15 minutes or so of sun so I'm gonna have to start setting up my camp so tonight I don't have a lot of time to go look for rocks or anything so I'm just building what we call a cowboy fire pit and let me show you how this works so a cowboy fire pit's real simple. I just dig a little bit of a depression in the ground. I use the dirt out of the depression to build up a little bit of a reflective wall or a windbreak wall around it. Now, a couple of the critical ingredients are, I want the lowest point in the very back of the fire pit. And I usually like this back wall to be fairly vertical. And then I want it sloping really gently away at the front. And this is going to allow as much heat as possible from those coals to radiate out the front of the fire to me. Also, this deepest part right here is where I can get a nice bed of coals to cook over or anything like that. So I'm going to keep working this up right now. I just want to bring this angle at the front out just a little shallower. For firewood, basically I'm just gathering these dry dead pieces of sage wood on the ground. And they're not real big, but they burn good and they make good firewood. I'm gonna have to hustle to get enough firewood to last the evening. So you guys might think there's no technique involved in cooking Mountain House and I'm not doing a big elaborate meal tonight, but I'm here to tell you that there's a perfect way to do Mountain Houses. First of all, you got to make sure you get the desiccant bag out of them. That's that little package of silica gel that keeps it from uh, collecting, that absorbs all the moisture out of the inside. The second thing is you want to dump your water in while it's literally still boiling hot. And the third and final thing about mountain houses, the absolute worst thing you can do to a mountain house is put too much water in it. So I always start slow, kind of eyeball it. Yeah, that's going to be about perfect. Listen to the coyotes out there.
those are actually pretty close. So I'm hiking out here away from camp a little bit, trying to get a little closer to those coyotes. They keep howling. They're getting farther away though. All right, sorry about that guys. I got distracted with the coyotes. I walked over there a little bit to listen to them and <clears throat> they're pretty close. So I think they winded me because the wind's kind of blowing that direction and that shut them up pretty quick. But <clears throat> boy, they were making all kinds of racket there. So back to the mountain house. So the other thing that you want to do is make sure that you stir it up really well. There's nothing like having globby chunks of half dried, half hydrated mountain house in your bites in there. So stir it thoroughly. And then finally, it's just a matter of waiting. While my mountain house is rehydrating, I just set it by the fire. Not so close that it melts, but just close enough that it can absorb a little heat from the fire and stay warm for longer while it's rehydrating. The other thing I like to make sure I do when I'm sitting around camp in the evening times is just drink a lot of water because oftentimes during the day I get distracted and I try to drink enough water but <clears throat> I always want to make sure that I'm nice and hydrated by the time I lay down and go to sleep at night. Plus I need a nice big bottle to pee in if I have to go in the middle of the night. <clears throat> so I'm going to go put this up in my rooftop tent. And the final mountain house tip is right before I eat it, I take the bag and I cut it down to size. So I'll probably go about right here and cut that off. And now it's the right height that I can dish it out with my spoon. And I don't get the handle on my spoon all sticky on the edges of the package, and I don't get my knuckles in the edge of the package. All right, cheers, guys. Supper time. The coyotes have been quiet for a while. I kind of miss them. I was kind of enjoying listening to them. Well guys, I had dinner. I got a good pile of wood here for in the morning. All my chores are done and I think I'm ready to crawl up into the rooftop tent and have a little nap for the night. I'm just waiting for the fire to go down just a little bit more. I stuck one big juniper log on it a while back and it's taken a while to burn down. But <clears throat> All in all, it's a nice evening. The day didn't go how I planned, but any day out here is a good day. All right, I think I'm going to be really comfortable tonight. It's not that cold out here. I would say it's maybe like low 40s or something like that. So, and the wind died down a little bit. The uh, when I first got in the tent, the tent was pretty noisy because the wind was blowing pretty hard. But it seems to have died down. And uh, so I'm just going to catch a little bit of sleep, and I will see you guys in the morning. <clears throat> morning guys well the lights just starting to starting to fade in a little bit so I'm waking up having some coffee and I wanted to show you guys how I do my coffee in the morning here in the tent I just do a pack of the Starbucks via and a bottle of water and actually what I do is <clears throat> I just put the coffee packet right inside the water off so I just put the packet of coffee right inside there make sure I get it all out I want every last drop of that caffeine put the cap on shake it up and boom I got my morning coffee It's delicious. 
So I'm doing a little map recon this morning before I get out of my tent, and I've actually turned my heater on a little bit, <clears throat> just to warm me up before I go outside and make a fire, and it's still dark out there. Hopefully it'll be light in another 20 minutes or a half hour. I got coyotes all around me. There's one back over that direction. A couple of them over there. And then there was another group of them over there. And one of the nicest things about this cowboy fire is when I go to button it up, it's easy. All I do is I just shovel the dirt right back on top of it. Another rain or two and nobody will ever even be able to tell this fire pit was here. All right, there she is, all buttoned up. Let's go exploring. So I headed out of camp and I headed off towards my first historic site that I wanted to find for the day. A few miles later, I found it. It's an old ranch house built around 1920, but back behind the ranch house, there's a much older homestead that was built in the late 1800s. So I set off to see if I could find it. Check this out. I'm just hiking out across the sagebrush flat, and I stumbled across this. I'm thinking it's some kind of old farm implement. It's got to be pretty old. It had a wood deck on it. I'm just out here. There's a homestead not too far from here. And I just had a hunch there was more up this little draw here. So I just walked up to check it out. Found the old tire dump. Maybe somebody can tell me what era these tires are from. They look like bias ply. A lot of them are pretty small. Not sure what that thing is. Some kind of a tongue. All right, so I found this old dump pile, junk pile. Some old fenders off of a car. Lot of old trash in here. And surprisingly enough, there's quite a few whole bottles in here. Haven't found anything super old so far. It's just crazy the bones of the past are still out here. There's an old homestead right in here somewhere. So I'm kind of circling around to see if I can find the old homestead. After kicking around the old homestead for another hour or so, I decided to jump back in the Jeep, head deeper into the desert, and see if I could find traces of an old wagon road that I've been reading about for years that crossed through that country. So I started hiking a couple of miles across a small system of buttes that I had read that the wagon road crossed, just hoping to find some sign of the activity that went along with the old wagon road. Look at here. Here's an old stump that was cut with an axe. So what that tells me is there were people in here a long time ago. All right guys, check this out. So I've been coming into these really old stumps. That old road comes through here and I believe I might have found it. So look at this as the really classic wagon road look where they've moved the boulders to the side 
The boulders have been moved to the side for a long time and they have a lot of lichen growing over them. I wish I had my metal detector. All right, look at this. This is another really old stump cut with an ax. And I found a couple of little pieces of broken china in here. So I'm just gonna keep hunting around and see if I can find some more signs. But this is looking good. These, these stumps are really, really old. And a couple of these fine little pieces of broken china. I just wanna find a little bigger piece if I can that has some of the imagery or even some writing on it. Here's a really cool section right here where you can really see the rocks that they piled to the side. See that line of rocks? Right along here, and right up the side of this hill. Yeah, this gives you an idea how old this track is. That juniper tree's grown right up in the middle of it, so my guess is, so that juniper is about two feet in diameter at the base, so that thing's probably right around 100 years old or more. Just imagine that the, wor the work that went into piling all these rocks to the side. And this winds all the way down into the bottom where there's a spring and a creek down there. And that was probably the next stopping off or camping spot. Another thing to keep in mind is that these wagon roads, they form these depressions, these little U's like this. And this is pretty classic, this little U-shaped depression here. But then over time, the water followed that depression, so they got washed out deeper and deeper. So right here, this is actually probably more pronounced now than it would have been, you know, a hundred years ago or something. It's just so awe-inspiring to me to be walking down a trail that was traveled by hundreds of covered wagons and people over 150 years ago on their way out to settle this part of the West. These people were literally some of the first homesteaders in this part of the country. Walking along that old wagon road was a great way to end my trip. But then, like all good things, it must come to an end. It was time to head back to civilization. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along this adventure with me, and I'll see you on the next one. Coyote Works, out.